learners in this video we are going to look into the essay the first atom bomb written by marcel junot marcel junot was a swiss doctor and a field delegate of the international committee of the red cross he is remembered for his selfless service during the abyssinian war the spanish civil war and the second world war he was also the first foreign doctor to reach hiroshima after the atom bomb attack by the us which was on 6th august 1945 In 1947 he published a book about his experiences which was titled Warrior Without Weapons. He then worked for the United Nations Children's Fund in China and then settled in Europe in 1950. In the year 1952 he was appointed as a member of the ICRC and held the position of vice president until his death in 1961. So in this essay Juno describes the terrible destruction of the once prosperous and thickly populated city of Hiroshima in Japan during the second world war it was on the 6th of august 1945 that an atom bomb was used for the first time in warfare on the city of Hiroshima this essay begins by describing the once prosperous Hiroshima then goes on to give us a very detailed account of the destruction of the city after the atom bomb attack and also sheds light on mac other speech on the futility of war Through the essay the essayist expresses his contempt for war and his genuine worry about the future of mankind with the emergence of such deadly modern weapons like the atom bomb Now let's get into the essay The essay begins by Junot stating that it has been 3 weeks after the two atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki He then goes on to describe the response of the Americans when he mentioned the word Hiroshima as well as the response of the japanese he then writes of the inclusive and uncertain number of deaths injuries and other related symptoms of the atom bomb in hiroshima and then he goes on to talk of the telegram he had received from bill finger the telegram conveyed that almost 90% of the city of hiroshima had been destroyed along with many hospitals which were either destroyed completely or crucially damaged due to the bombing The effects of the bomb remained mysterious and uncertain. The surviving victims were still in dangerous conditions and needed proper medical care. But there was a serious shortage of medical material like bandages and medicine etc. Appeals had been sent out for supplies to be urgently parachuted to the center of the town and according to the telegram the things that were urgently required were large supplies of bandages, cotton wool, ointments for treating burns sulfamides blood plasma and transfusion kits the telegram ended by stating that urgent action was required the author took this telegram along with a few photographs which he still had with him and immediately set off to the yokohama chamber of commerce where general mac other and his staff had already positioned themselves Marcel Junot then goes on to describe the reactions of General Fitch, Chief of the US Information Service, Colonel Marcus of the Prisoners of War Department, Colonel Webster, Chief of the Hospital Service and Colonel Sams in charge of assistance for the civil population towards the telegram and the photographs. Despite the telegram clearly mentioned that it was an urgent matter, these officials gave their consent to send in 15 tons of medicament and hospital material only after a week on 7 september they also asked marcel juno to board a plane to hiroshima along with a commission of injury or an investigation team to analyze the situation there once the investigation team of the international red cross reaches hiroshima they met two japanese interpreters miss ito who was canadian born and a japanese journalist who spent 20 years in us according to miss ito hiroshima the name means the broad island it was a busy and prosperous town placed on the delta of the river ota it was also the seventh largest town in japan and the seven branches of the river ota came together here in a perfect triangle Hiroshima had many factories, oil refineries, a harbor and wheen and arsenal with a population of around 250,000 people. They also had a military unit of 150,000 soldiers. After this account of the previous state and glory of Hiroshima, the journalist gives an account of the day that Hiroshima was hit by the atom bomb which was on the 6th of August. The journalist says that on that particular day the sky was clear. 
and visibility was perfect for nearly 12 miles. On that day at 7 9 a.m., an air raid warning was given and four American planes appeared in the sky. However, the planes flew off without causing any disturbances and at 7.31 a.m., the all-clear message was given. So people felt safe and came out of their shelters and returned back to their work and normal routines. All of a sudden, a harsh whitish-pink colored light appeared in the sky along with an unnatural tremor and a suffocating wave of heat and wind which was so powerful that it carried off all that was in its way. In a few seconds, many people were killed and severely injured by the scorching heat. Walls, houses, trams, trains, etc. were lifted off and flung into the air. Animals met with the same fate as man. Trees and plants were burned and left like dry straw on the ground. Most of the people inside the house were killed and those who had managed to stay alive died a few days later because of the delayed effects of the deadly gamma rays. The journalist stated that half an hour after this explosion, the sky around Hiroshima was still cloudless, but a rain began to fall on the town and went on for about five minutes. This was caused by the instant rise of overheated air, which went to a great height where it condensed and fell back in the form of rain. After this, a violent wind came up and the fires grew rapidly as most Japanese houses were built out of wood and straw. This fire faded out only by evening and then went out completely as there was literally nothing left to burn. Hiroshima had died. All the Japanese could utter was the word, look, and this word was spoken with an indescribable but constrained emotion. The entire town was wiped off and all that remained was a stony waste. As the journalist finished his account, they stepped out of the car they were traveling in and made their way through a dead city where not even an animal could be spotted. They got on to meet Professor Suzuki, who was one of the best surgeons in Japan. He led the way and spoke loudly so the whole group could hear him clearly. The words that came out of his mouth were unconnected as it was driven by deep emotion. He said, we must open our minds. We must try to understand everything. He then pointed to the remainders of a base wall and said that it was once a hospital with 200 beds, 8 doctors and 20 nurses but now all of them, including the patients, had been killed by the atomic power. He then says that that's what an atomic bomb does. A few days before Marcel Junot left Tokyo, he was informed that General Makado wished to receive the delegation of the International Red Cross. When the general received them in his office, he was wearing the normal service uniform of the U.S. Army and the only sign of his high rank were the five stars hung around each of his shoulder strap. In a casual and relaxed manner, he sat down with them, smoking his pipe and thanked them for the work they had done on behalf of the imprisoned Americans. But it was evident that he was not thinking merely about his own men, but also of all those who had no other hope of assistance. Unexpectedly, here he speaks against his professional character rejecting the use and application of force. And the general says that even with our present weapons, not including those still to be developed, a new war would leave nothing behind worthy of mention. And so, Marcel Junod ends the essay raising questions on the future of mankind if another war takes place and the urgent need for saving mankind from itself. So that's all about the summary of this essay. I hope you have understood this. Thank you for watching.